update, I solved the problem in approximately 12 seconds. <laughs> Sometimes that's just how it goes, right? <clears throat> you think that the problem is going to be really hard and you get yourself pumped up. You're going to read a whole bunch of white papers on quaternions and understand them at a deep fundamental level. And then I just found quaternion.look rotation. <laughs> and quaternion look rotation just takes a forwards and an upwards and boom you're done <clears throat> so i will demonstrate that quickly and then we can get our <clears throat> our whittling oop so you can see him just snapping right now the animation part of these cube corner transfers i think are going to have to be fudged for a long time. <clears throat> I think that's more of a polish type thing, you know. Maybe talk to some animator and come up with some cute ways for our whittlings to transition uh, from face to face. You know, there's two types of transitions. There's the intercube one, where we go from cube A to cube B. Then there's the intra-cube one, where it's cube A to cube A, but just different faces. And so one of them wraps around a corner, and the other one sort of squishes into a corner. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, now that we have look rotation working, let's just, um, let's do that. And we can make this target... Oh, we don't even need target forward anymore, do we? Yes, deleting code. We don't need path increment index, current path index. Let's rename this to is rotating. And since we're using a slurp, that means we're going to have a rotate timer. And let's rename this to Rotate Duration. <clears throat> Maybe like a 0 0.25 second rotation. Something nice and fast. We'll toggle that later. If is rotating, then <clears throat> Rotate Timer plus equals... Ooh, you know what we could do? We could even use a curve for this. Yeah, let's do that. I like curves. <clears throat> okay. It's got a timer, a curve, a duration. So we'll add delta time to our timer and then we'll have a float ratio is not the right word for this <clears throat> it is a so I'm evaluating a curve so maybe it's the curve output Curve result. We'll do curve output. And that's our rotate curve dot evaluate. And I am evaluating the rotate timer out of rotate duration. So this should put the evaluation between zero and one. And if rotate and timer is greater than or equal to rotate duration, this transform rotation equals target rotation. And we'll probably also want a quaternion <coughs> for start rotation. Uh, 
else. Um, we're going to set the rotation to a quaternion slurp, which stands for spherical linear interpolation. Pretty cool. Whoa, hey, that's not what I wanted. Start rotation, target rotation, and then curve output. And if this happens, then is rotating equals false. Okay. So this is our target rotation. Our start rotation will just grab the transform. And we only want to, if start rotation does not equal target rotation, only then is rotating equals true and rotate timer equals zero. <clears throat> so we'll restart the timer here. And I do believe that should make life grand. Hmm. That was pretty darn fast. Hey, no curve! <laughs> That'll do it. I like this curve. This is a good one. Start fast, end slow. Rotate duration, quarter of a second. And let's watch and make sure that this face traverse direction... Ooh, buddy! Ooh, buddy! That's looking pretty darn... Pretty darn good. Oh! Ooh! Solid. Very solid. Hey, Thunderbutt. Welcome back to the stream. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think... Well, you know what? I don't have to wake up tomorrow early for work. Maybe let's just keep pushing it. So, what's next? I could. I am going to have to spend time to fix all of my faces. Maybe I could do that now. Because I only. Excuse me. I only have a correct down half curve. After that is set, our next goal is going to be checking these overlaps. Yeah, <clears throat> and the overlap problem, I've got a couple plans uh, that I'd like to try out. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it to sit here and watch me um, fix all of these. <clears throat> but I'm just, I'm going to do it. It needs to be done. Ah, uh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's create a... Let's just create a quick plane. <clears throat> so that I've got something to work on. Hey, no cleaning on the table. You know the rules. Oof. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, this plane's color is bad. No, no, no. Oh, even worse. Oh, God. Oof. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> I just want something that will provide a nice contrast for my colliders. So I'm going to do the same thing here. This is going to be our start path node. I hope I name that correctly. Let's drop this in here.
Doon, doon. Start leaf node. I knew something was wrong. And this should be tagged. This is our center node. And if I recall, our branch node, we subtracted 0.12, so this is 0 0.38, 0 0.38. Yes. <clears throat> and so this is our, if we're walking towards the end, to the right end path end leaf node. So this will be point five. And we'll tag it as an end duplicatio. How's that look? It looks a little strange, but I guess I guess it's fine. <clears throat> uh, now let's do the linkage. So starts next is center. Centers next is branch, previous is start. This branch node, oh, hey. Direction is forward. And this is right, this is left. Next is null because we got a branch there, and then previous is center. <clears throat> this one's going to be a little bit more interesting. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these as right or left as if you were walking into the branch. And this will be our start. So if I'm walking into the branch, this is going to be right. And this will be our left. That means our, we're going to need to duplicate this, and this will be our start branch node. Nice. This should not be tagged. Ooh. Got to be careful with that copy paste. Be very aware of all of the things that will carry over from one thing to another. Dangerous stuff. This is at point three eight. So center node, and then I'm going to duplicate all 
three of these. And let's change the name first. So right end, this is going to be at full x, so 0.5, and positive almost, <clears throat> very, um, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Very scientific terms, positive almost. So left end, as if I'm walking to the branch, left is going to be full on the Z positive, and then almost on the X. Our start branch node is just going to be positive Z. And this is actually the end branch node. Oh, you know what? I think I killed the chat. Let me bring that up again, just in case somebody decides to come hang out. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. So we've got all of our nodes. Let's do some linking. So starts next is branch. It has no previous. Left's next is branch. Start branch node, the branch direction is backward. But the right and left still stand. Which means that the starts. Oh, geez. Yes, starts next is center node. There is no previous because it's a branch. Center node is connected to two branches, so next would be the end branch, previous would be the start branch. What is this? It's just guys, he's just hanging out there. Yeah, I'll fix that later. Okay, center node, we've got our links. I believe we're going to be able to kill all of this linked path node. Oh, maybe not on the linked path node on the same cube. We might want to keep that. So let's see. Where were we? Center node, we're at end branch. So Previous is here, and there is no next because we have a branch. L diagonal path base. Let's make sure these are all tagged correctly. And, whoo, buddy. Yep. Copy paste. Dangerous stuff. <clears throat> Okay. So, L path face, this is solid still. Nothing changes here, except for the tags. And we should name these better. Start leaf node. Center node, end leaf node. Apply, no path face, no changes needed. That's what I like. Start end path face. Sure, sure. We should at least name these nodes and tag them. Hey, named. I like that. Cool. Straight diagonal. This is one's going to be a fair bit of work. 
just like our previous double diagonal, our double corner entry exit. Oh, this is crazy. This actually doesn't need a center node. I don't know how I feel about this. <clears throat> So we'll just say this is the start, and if we're going towards the branch, we'll do start right leaf node. And the leaf node should be almost on the X. Ah, uh, naming, naming, naming. Left start leaf node. This is full on the X and almost on the Z negative side. Point five, <laughs> not five units. I wonder how long that would have taken me to find. So this will be our start branch node. Untagged, new script, branch. So this is start node, which means that the branch is backward. Oh, let's not link them yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just make them first. End branch. Oh, oh, I need to place this correctly. And so this is going to be positive, maybe, uh -huh. this will be negative x. Let's duplicate this. Instead of duplicating all three at a time, so if I'm walking this way, <clears throat> left is going to be full on negative x and positive Z. Change the tag. Oh, not goal. Ruffle. Right. This is almost on the negative X. Full on the positive Z. And then we've got this extra node chilling out that does nothing. <clears throat> cool. Those are looking solid. Now, you might be wondering, because I'm wondering the same thing, how good is it to be hard coding all of these 0.38s? And the answer is not great. But... This is a prototype, and um, actually in my mesh generation code that I wrote for about a week and did not post, this is a solved problem. <clears throat> the unsolved problem for me is actually extruding these meshes. I've got the baselines being drawn. I probably need to go in and do a lot more work with path connections and things like that. But I was stopped on the actual generation of the mesh. I'm afraid I'm going to have to learn uh, Boolean subtraction, which should be fun. <clears throat> That'll be in 
educational stream for sure. Although in all honesty, I would probably prepare for that instead of just walking in blind. So let's see, starts next is the branch. Starts next is the branch. The previous ones would be linked dynamically. Start branch nodes next is end branch node. Then right and left. End branches previous is start branch. Okay, that's fine. And then this is a forward branch, and it is right end leaf node, which should be to the right, that's correct. And left. Audrey's. So these left and previous should be the branch node. That means our starts next should be start node. Cool. Mm. This is worrying stuff. Are they tagged correctly? End, end, start, start. Branches have branch scripts, looking good, backward and forward, cool. And then finally, our straight path face. Which, all we have to do is change start leaf node. End leaf node. Oh, hey, already have the node. That means ends previous is start and starts next is end. Let's make sure these are all updated straight diagonal start end L. L diagonal, half curved up. Let's select all of them and just eyeball it. Okay, these look pretty solid. Hmm. Didn't take too long. Hmm. I'm afraid it's time to use I'm afraid that it's time to figure out overlaps when the game begins. I do believe that all of our previous code will work um, for our paths like, you know, if we have four paths connecting here in this area, I think our find perpendicular path logic is solid. <clears throat> the real thing that saved me was making sure the Whitlings couldn't travel from corner to corner. Corner to corner would have been bad news bears, 100%. First of all, the animation would have been janky. I was imagining them like doing a little flip over, but... Oof, I didn't like that. 
So. Oh dear. Huh. Oh my goodness. I keep making more work for myself. But maybe I just realized if I have a path on a cube that goes like this with exits in these two directions, I could, in theory, make a cube face that was something like this. You know, it like wraps around the edge. <clears throat> so this is pretty darn cool. But what would that mean for like here? Like if this path connected here. What would the Whitling do? Uh, okay, so maybe no turns of that size. Ah, uh, you know what? But even then... This is a dangerous idea. A lot of problems could come up. If I just... Even if I just created a simple path... That was like on the right side of the cube, and this was the unwalkable terrain. It would look cool, sure, to have a path connected here and a path connected here. But what would happen if we had a path like this, right? That would mean that this path here, this sideways path, visibly looks like it matches up. But really, it's creating this crazy conditional path. I mean, how bad would it be? to put, like, path nodes, like so. I mean, there'd be a branch here. The center node would be a dynamic freeway branch. Well, making notes of the idea, even though I'm not too excited about it. <clears throat> I'm afraid that I'm going to get all of this working. Oh, hey, Fun Flyer. I am making a puzzle game where you've got your little dude, you rotate your cubes around, and he can walk on. Oh. That's a bug. <laughs> uh, he can walk on any path as long as the paths are connected. So it's sort of like um, if you know the old game Lemmings, it's like stupid little creatures that just walked forward. It's a combination of Lemmings and Pipe Dream. And right now, I'm currently working on... I just added a whole bunch of new faces and path nodes. Cube rotation test. Oh boy, everything's broken there. 
Yep. Ah, all of these cubes are bad cubes. Um, hmm. <laughs> I'm going to duplicate this guy. And I wrote a custom editor. So I can very easily set the paths and the rotation on the faces. Because there's like 12, I don't know, up to 12 game objects per face. And so this is just a really nice way to easily add and remove. <clears throat> um, I teach video game programming and scripting at a college. And so I always have a project brewing. I've got like 30 unfinished projects like everybody. But I decided to start streaming at least one hour a day, every day, until this project is done. That is my goal. I'm not going to get wouldn't it be cool if disorder and scrap this game whenever I come across something difficult. I'm going to finish the damn thing. And so I've been working on it for about two weeks now. Not long at all. It's still just a prototype. But I'd say I'm a professional teacher, and then this is my hobby personal project. Are you sure you want to replace the contents of the prefab? Yes. Thanks. Yeah, it's a simple idea. I always try to make my games way too big. And even then, just this simple concept is getting fairly complex. I haven't even added any job systems or special cube types. I'm just working on the core pathing and animation stuff. But once that core stuff is set, then I can start to play and have more fun with designing the puzzles. Let's see if that fixed it. Hey, it did. So hopefully you should all randomize. Nice. So this is what a more complex level would look like. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm actually randomizing um, start and end things here. That's really funny. I considered using this as like a design for a Whitling to just turn around, but I'm not sure. Let's see if I can connect. Hey, there we go. So in theory, once I've got my math right, the Whitling should be able to walk all the way up. Uh-oh. Oh dear. That is problem. Another large problem I have is if I'm going to randomize the levels, I need a really serious AI <clears throat> that can check to see if the levels are beatable. Uh, procedural puzzles are extremely tricky. Uh, maybe there's a diagonal curve. Yeah, there we go. 
Okay. So it is still possible. Nice. Why don't I make game cheats? I make cheats all the time. Um, cheating is one of the most important skills when developing a game. How do you cheat effectively? Exposing those cheats to the end user or the player, that's like a design decision. But actually, when you're making a game, you want to cheat as hard as possible. Like, I don't want to have to solve this level to test if my goal works. I just want to teleport my guy to the goal cube, or even better, just put the goal cube right next to the start. No, no, definitely not. Um, I really don't play first-person shooters. Uh, I know it is possible to cheat, especially if the server engineers um, don't have a good grasp of what data belongs on the client and what data belongs on the game server itself. And I know there's always ways to cheat. Um, some people view it as like a personal challenge. Like, they're not really cheating to win at the game. They're cheating to outsmart the developers of the game. So I can see why some people do it. But on the other hand, I think uh, if one person gets to cheat, everybody should be able to cheat the same way. More of a game design idea than breaking the rules. But some, some games, especially card games or board games, encourage cheating. And everyone is allowed to cheat, and if you get caught, you're busted, but uh, that's really, really hard to do in computer game land. Uh, not fun flyer. Are you a game developer, student, hobbyist? Sounds like fun. Do you do, um, <clears throat> do you like do memory mapping where you find out what variables are stored in what location of the computer's <clears throat> RAM? Or do you do like, um, network packet sniffing and you try and try and falsify packets to send to the server? I'm kind of curious how you would go about doing that. You could also, I guess, um, if you knew where things were stored, you could use like an auto hotkey bot or something to, I don't know, give aim assist or something like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What tools do you use? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the machine, your local machine, needs to know the transform of most of the objects in the game. Even if they're not being rendered, your game state would know where most of the, at least, dynamic objects are. Because it needs that to determine, should I be rendering this? <laughs> should, I start, should I start spinning up the cache, right? Interesting. Hmm. Ah! Yeah. Hey. So cold. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard of Ollie. Ollie DGB. I assume VS Pro is Visual Studio. Hmm. <laughs> well, I think I I think I nailed what I was aiming for tonight. <clears throat> I do have my guy walking on walls. His turn is Ah, yeah, I was like DGB. I read it as debug in my mind at first, too. <laughs> and then I reread it and I was like, oh, maybe maybe DGB is something different. But yeah, my next goal, um I had it working previously where when I would spin the cubes, the Path nodes would overlap and they would connect with themselves. And when I begin spinning, it would disconnect all the links on the cube. But since I changed how my faces work, now I get to go back and... Yeah, yeah, there's good money in a lot of things. Um, I'm a teacher, so I obviously don't care about good money. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do believe um especially if you're cheating on like high circuit, I don't know, I don't know how. I imagine that's like really dangerous, you know, reputation and legal wise, but um yeah, if you're cheating at a high level, you'd probably get paid a lot of money. Or I guess an organization would pay you, the cheater, or the cheat maker, for proprietary use of the tools and your silence. I don't know. I don't know how this works. I just read books <laughs> and watch movies. <laughs> huh. Completely legal. Hmm. Well, it was really fun talking to you, no, uh, not fun flyer. Uh, do you do you stream your <laughs> your tool making at all? I'll call it tool making. I'd love to swing by and check it out. I guess that makes sense. Um, but I'd imagine that if you're in a a league of some sort, you probably have to sign some legal document that would say I'm not going to cheat. But I agree, yeah, if you're just if you're just using the copy of the game and modifying bits on your machine, I don't think there's anything illegal about that. There shouldn't be. You bought the machine, you bought the product, right?
I wonder what happens if I do this. Are we going to teleport? <laughs> ah, man. Really? They gave you the hammer? Yeah, it happens. That should not work. Ooh, that sounds very cool. Colonel Driver. You gotta be down in the down in the low level. I imagine that's very difficult. I imagine it's very like um it's like a very fun puzzle too. Like you would just be poking at poking at it and making changes and then logging your results and seeing what happened and sort of building a battle plan one step at a time. I like it. And I guess if you can uh, write kernel drivers, you should be making over 100k a month. Oh, a month? I thought you said a year. Good grief. Mm -hmm. Always bugs. That is life. Actually, the, the main reason I reworked my pathing system is previously I just had a node on each of these corners. But when I spun the cube, these two paths would register as connected because their corners were overlapping. And visually, they are not connected at all. And I didn't want to have to do some stupid animation of him, like, flying over here. Hmm. But now, with the new path nodes, they do not overlap. That is very nice. Well, that's it for me. I'm off. Got some work to do tomorrow, but it was really fun talking with you, not fun flyer. Um I will I will friend you and if you're ever streaming, I'd love to Well, I don't know if you can stream what you do. But yeah, peace. Hope to see you again. Ah, I don't have an actual set schedule. My my teaching schedule sort of like changes semester to semester. Uh, but usually, I think like midnight to one is pretty good. Yeah, I thought so. Um, yeah, sometimes midnight to one, or on like Fridays, I'll do it in the afternoon. I think it would be better if I like picked an hour every day and always did it at that hour, so people could kind of ha come hang out at least, instead of just hoping somebody sees, clicks programming, and checks it out. Cool. Hope to see you around. Yeah, it was good to meet you too. Be good.